Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you are all doing well. If it's your first time here, my name is Vanessa Lee, hello. So today I am going to be talking about my Ripsalis and how I take care of them. I don't have many, I've only got about seven, I think. Um, and that's actually, yeah, I've got seven Ripsalis, but I do have some Epiphyllums, which are jungle cactus, so I might talk about that plant as well I think I've only got one yeah just one other so I mean eight including that one um what else did I want to say oh good news there was one of my Ripsalis that I didn't know the name of I now have the ID for that plant and I'm going to tell you how I discovered that when I show you the plant what else what else what else Oh, um, I do have a Ripsilus um, wish list, so maybe I'll do that at the end. So if you're interested in my wish list for this year, then stick around for that. But until then, let's flip the camera around and have a look and see what my Ripsilus have been up to. They're behind me. You can see them hanging here, but we're going to get up close and personal. Okay. Right, so most of the Ripsalis are here and I do have one or two, I think, under there. But yeah, the majority of them are on this um, shelving unit, which I got from Ikea. I absolutely love it. It's a glass shelf. I think it's called Vitzjo. I did do a video um, when I built this shelving unit and I really like this, actually, this, what would they call it? make or brand ikea brand i've also got the coffee table which i've kind of separated but anyway let's not talk about the shelving um so yeah the first thing i want to talk about is the lights so we do have a south east facing window directly in front and currently we're in the winter so it is what is it today's today's date i think yeah so we're in march and we're creeping towards spring which is very exciting but currently we're still in the winter so i do have plant lights now i must say that this plant my um paradoxa ripsalis paradoxa minor which is the slender one check length out yeah this one um i must say tends to like this light i mean it's really really seems to be enjoying it it is the burrito it's one of the burrito lights i think i'm saying that right i think i'll put a link in the description because it really is a fantastic light now when you buy it you get two so i've got one there and I have one here, is that right? Oh no, there, sorry. So yeah, I've got one there, one there, and they have their own power source. And that is just there. Let me see if I can get my hand in there. Uh, yeah, there it is. So there are various different settings, but this is the setting that I have it on this type of light I like it it's warm and yellow and it seems to respond to that really really well but it also gets really spoiled on days like today where the sun is shining and then besides this window I actually have another one here which is southwest and often that light does kind of sort out the shelving it hits the shelving unit. Um, okay, so that is the light. And I'm giving up the plant lights at the moment. Like I said, we are in winter. And the lights are on for 12 hours. They are set to come on at 8.30. And then they switch off at 8.30 in the evening. 
Um, the other thing that I've been doing with my plants, all obviously all the plants that are in here are being treated the same way when it comes to heating as well. And I do keep the heat at 20 centigrade. So I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I think that's about 80 maybe, I don't know. Um, sometimes I do get the humidity higher, especially when I hang um, like washing out to dry and I will put it in front of the heater and that really does raise the humidity. It will raise it up into the 80s. So I'm quite, yeah, I get really good humidity throughout the winter. Whether I'm trying to or not, it's generally around 65 and I can definitely see that the plant loves that because look at all these aerial roots. There are so many. I could propagate this plant very easily with so many roots already popping out. Um, I can also see that there's a lot of new growth, which is fantastic. So it definitely feels like it's been tricked into thinking that maybe it's been spring or I definitely don't feel that it thinks it's summer but it definitely seems to love the temperatures that I've been giving the plant and the lighting. In the evening um, the plant lights like I said go off at 8 30. Now I generally get home from work at around 7 seven thirty at the latest and I will switch the heating down from 20 to 19. And then when the lights go off, the heating then goes down to 18 and that's how it will stay throughout the night. Um, yeah, so I've had this plant, this paradox of mine that I've had for exactly one year. I don't know if I said that. I bought it quite locally. There's um, a plant shop that's very very close to me and I absolutely love going to this place because they tend to have just some really unusual finds. I wasn't expecting to find this plant and I just saw it there instantly fell in love. I actually also bought this Ritzalis, sorry what am I saying, this Linearis. I actually bought the Linearis from the same place so we can definitely see that the owner of the store tends to like this type of plant. And I should actually go back, um, like, soon. I have seen, um, where did I see this plant referred to as a Ripsalis linearis? That was quite interesting. I mean, you can kind of see that there is a similarity. So, yeah, that's my first one that I want to show you. The next one is this little guy. And I don't know how long, I'm going to have to look at my notebook to tell you how long I've had this plant. Um, okay, so I've had this plant for about nine months. And this one is a, oh, let's see. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a ripsal, it's a ripsalus. Uh, Bachifera um, F. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Safari. I will put the right, I'll put the name up. I'm, I'm sure that's its name. I just don't feel that I've said it properly. But yeah, again, loving the light that's above and the humidity. And both, if actually no, didn't tell you about the soil mix because there is a slight difference with just this one plant. This one, for some reason, I put in a chunky aeroid mix. Now, obviously I've had this one the longest, so I didn't really know anything about Ripsalis. Um, all I did was I repotted it out of the soil that it was in. I put it in this vessel. It's in a no drainage um, situation. We've got Lekka at the bottom that acts as a reservoir which I do not use and when I water the plant now you can see that there's already there's water in there I mean you can see there's condensation which tells me the soil is moist now I wait until that is completely dry and um, 
when I do water this plant, um, I do tend to, what do I do? I mean, like I will water, where is that little water bottle? Let me just grab it. Yeah, when I water the plant, I will use this, this water bottle. It's like a squeezy bottle, it's really handy. If you don't have one of these, I would definitely suggest getting one. It's fantastic. Um, the reason why the water is brown is because it's got, um, <laughs> I put some great white in there. Okay, so just ignore that. So yeah, I'll just make sure that when I water, I water absolutely every little bit of soil, you know, like I try and get it as evenly wet as I can, but I try not to allow the water to go into the reservoir. I don't really want that. It is in a chunky aeroid mix, but there is a fair amount of cocoa core in there. So yeah, so I'm kind of cautious when it comes to watering and I've found that I'm probably watering this plant every 10 days, maybe every two weeks, probably closer to that actually. And I can't say that my watering has changed that much um, compared to the summer, I've, I feel that I was probably maybe every 10 days in the summer, but it feels pretty much the same. It does feel the same. The root system is extremely healthy. Let me just hang on, move that one out of the way. Yeah, you can see it's got like some really, really substantial root system. Let me put this water bottle down. We can get in there like here yeah like here you can see there's a lot of roots I mean check out how much husk there is in there I would I think like to change this to what I have all my other ripsilis in which I'm going to talk through just now so sorry about the backwards and forwards but yeah I forgot actually that this one is in a slightly different soil mix than all of the others it's actually in the same soil mix that my Linearis is in. I know this isn't about Hoyas, but yeah, they're in the same soil. Okay, going back to this little guy. So um, yeah, this is the Ripsala Shafferi and it has been growing. Look at it. I mean, when I got it, it was tiny. It came in the tiniest little pot. And as you can see, it is in no drainage as well. We've got liquor balls at the bottom. But this plant is actually in um, desert mix. And I'll show you the desert mix just now because I do actually want to repot a plant just now. And I'll show you what that's looking like. But I mean, look at these roots. They're just absolutely everywhere. They're everywhere. The plant absolutely loves this semi-hydro situation. No, semi-hydro. Yeah, the plant seems to like the no drainage. You can see that there's lots of roots there. Also trying to make their way down. And yeah, I basically, I do exactly the same thing when I water this plant. Now with the desert mix, it is a lot more free flowing. So the water tends to go straight through it quite quickly. So with these ones that are in the desert mix, I do tend to just leave about a centimeter of water at the bottom. It's just that I will water as I do with the one I just showed you, like I'm making sure that the substrate is nicely covered everywhere. And then I'll come back again and do a second dose because I just, I kind of tend to wait for it to make its way through, just leave it for a little while and then I'll come back and water it again. And I'll just make sure that there's a little bit of water there in the reservoir. Okay, the one behind, which I'm actually gonna grab it. Here we go. This is my rips, it's a Ripsalus red coral i'll put its full name up because i can never say it correctly ramaculus something like that it is growing i mean 
it's definitely i mean it also came in a tiny pot so it clearly has grown but it's kind of one of those plants that you don't really notice but i can actually see that i mean that stem right there i don't know is this focusing nicely or not put it on the floor and i'll just put my hand behind it but yeah that's definitely new that's new that's new oh no there's lots of new ones in there I mean, it's just not exactly hanging over the pot just yet, but I think it will get there also in a desert mix. And as you can see, we have lots of roots, lots of algae. I don't know why it's, I think it's gone that color because there's sand in the desert mix. Um, look at this root system. It's phenomenal. It's really, really loving the desert mix. So yeah, I think between the two substrates, I'm probably loving the desert mix more. more. Oh, it's getting heavy. Yeah, I'm probably loving the de desert mix. Oh my gosh, say it girl, say it. I'm loving the desert mix more um, because I'm kind of, I like using the reservoir, I like kind of knowing that if I do go away that I can get away with using the reservoir whereas with this paradoxa being in a chunky aeroid mix which is very cocoa core and cocoa husk heavy um, it kind of worries me to use the reservoir that it's just going to be a little too soggy and I really don't want that I don't feel that it would enjoy that so at some stage I will need to repot it. I will need to find a new vessel. It looks like it's bursting out of there. I mean, look at the growth on the top of that. It's just nuts. Yeah, okay, so red coral. I think in the summer with this one, I would like to up its lighting. So it might go in the hallway right in front of that southeast facing window. Um, yeah i need to think of a way of hanging it or something because we are running out of space out there as well but yeah i'd like to give up like raise the lighting and see if i can get some pinky red color to this these le these leaves or stems leaves i think should we call them leaves okay let's move on to the next one mm -hmm. Okay, next is this little guy and oh my gosh, this is the one I want to repop. Maybe I should grab that one last because that's a bit tricky. Let's go down. This one is my Ripsalis Micratha. And as you can see, it's in exactly the same vessel, in fact. It's very lucky to have bought these vessels. I bought them from Little Dobby's. They have like this little south section and I found them there and I bought the lot. Well, I didn't buy all of them actually. I wish I had, but um, I bought, I think three. And then the other one I got from a charity shop. I really love them. Um, as you can see, I watered this one recently and you can see that there's water there at the bottom. That's pretty much how much I left in the bottom. I really should have actually watered it on screen so that you could see my method. But I mean, it's pretty much what I told you. Um, but yeah, with this one, because we are in the winter, this is pretty much how much I have left in the reservoir. I didn't go too heavy. In the summer, I definitely make that deeper, but you can see it's very, very shallow. And yeah, the plant has been growing fabulously in Desert Mix. The Desert Mix is from Grow Tropicals and I will show you it just now when we do the repot. Let's have a look at these roots. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at this new stem. It's like literally reaching towards the window and we've got the uh, Paradoxa stuck to it. So, but yeah, you can see it's moist in there. And you, yeah, the roots are looking very good. They always seem to want to reach towards that reservoir of water, which is a really good healthy sign, I think. 
Um, I love using the clear vessels as well because I can keep an eye on those roots. And I can tell when it needs watering next. So yeah, that's that dude. Oh my gosh, okay. Behind that one, let me just move this guy. I feel like I'm doing gymnastics here. This Ripsalis is, I think it's called Sarah Scula. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I will just write them all down. I'll put all the names on the screen. I'm really, sometimes I'm just so bad with pronunciation. It's really interesting um, looking plant, actually. It really is quite alien looking. I mean, the way that it's growing, I'm really loving this plant and I'm very excited to see what it's gonna do in the summer because as you can see, this what also came in the tiniest of pots. It, I mean, all of the, the last, um, all of the Ritzalas that I've just shown you apart from the Paradoxa, I bought pretty much at the same time. And they came in, I think, like a five centimetre pot, like a ridiculously small pot. So they've grown substantially and I would love to get a little bit more light on it. Oh, there we go. Pretty, so pretty. Oh, I just love it. I can't wait to see what this thing is gonna do. And it's got like these little fluffy bits to them. And yeah, they seem to always come out as a three, like a three pronged situation. I don't know how easy it would be to propagate. I haven't tried propagating. I've tried, well, I've propagated the Paradoxa and I'll show you that just now, but I haven't tried any of the others. Ah, oh, I just really, uh, I just really love this plant and I'm excited to get it longer and you can see all these aerial roots are popping out and its actual roots are just nuts absolutely nuts look how thick that one is there yeah here i just want to show you these roots we're getting a bit of glare now but yeah the roots are looking super healthy and they seem to look it be looking much thicker than they were clearly loving the no drainage situation um but i guess you know i've only had them all for a year so it's early days still i guess but um they look like they're going to be pretty fast growers and will probably need repotting each year so even if there is a build up of any kind of minerals, fertilizers, etc., that'll be kind of, you know, renewed. Re clean, nice, clean, new soil once a year. Okay, so I wanted to show you. Oh my gosh, there's another one. There's another one. This is the one that I, for the longest time, I did not know the name of this plant. And I looked at so many videos and oh my gosh, there's some fantastic, I mean, there's some very factual uh, Rip Silas videos out there, but, oof, you know, they're, they're a lot. And it's so difficult to ID a plant when they're immature of any type of plant, but especially with the Ripsalis. Yeah, so what I love about this plant is the squareness of the stems. Aren't they just adorable? I hope you can see. Yeah, I think you can. They've got a kind of blockiness about them or cubic. Yeah, and I absolutely love that. But as you can see, as they grow out, that tends to disappear. So yeah, like I said, I looked at a lot of videos and I mean, a lot of the growers tend to have fairly mature plants. Couldn't find anything similar, really, I just couldn't. I mean, yeah, every now and then there was a plant that looked kind of similar, but 
not really and I eventually found well found rediscovered Facebook um, I now know how to use Facebook Facebook is fantastic for um, any type of hobby especially the plant stuff there are so many plant groups so I joined the Ripsilas plant group I'll put that in the description as well because I feel that it's like just worth it's just really worth joining um, because I put a photo up and I think someone from admin from the group responded like literally within, I don't know, five, ten minutes. I got a very quick response. Straight away, she gave me the name. I then Googled that name and I actually found a video also, oddly. You know, once you have the actual name, then it's much easier to find something, isn't it? Um, but yeah, and the video did explain that when it's immature, it's really cute because, you know, you have this squareness about it. But actually, as it grows out, it's just these very long, kind of weird looking, which I'm not hating. But yeah, it's, it's going to be kind of, I don't know. It's going to be quite unruly looking from what I can tell, which worries me. <laughs> but yeah, that's that one. That's that little dude. And what else do I have down here? I also, so like I was saying earlier, I did take some cuttings from my Ripsalis. I have, normally I would put them back in the pot when I've cut several pieces and put them back in the pot before but I decided to keep some separate here we go that's a little bit better I actually put three in but as you can see only two survived and there are roots there there they are there yeah camera yes there oh very nice. So yeah, it's in the same soil mix by Grow Tropicals, the desert one. And I just put it in this tiny little vessel. It was a candle. Um, yeah, really nice candle. Oh my gosh, it's this is one of my favourite um, perfumes. Dipitik. Oh my gosh, and the candle was delicious. But yeah, so I just kind of washed the vessel out and there it is still serving a purpose so yeah it was worth it um uh, have i missed anyone oh i have like a little cutting from my mother plant of my epiphyllum and oh no angulera let me just spin it around yeah, it has grown loads. You can see like the really super shiny pieces are the new bits. I, I think it was actually the original part of the plant was just this, this, this and this. And all of this has grown. But yeah, so this is the propagation. And yeah, it's in a chunky aeroid mix. And with this one... I'm watering more often than the other Ripsalis, definitely. Well, I feel that I am. No, no, I'm treating them all the same way. They are all getting the same. Yeah, they're all getting the same kind of watering timing. Um, the only thing with this plant, which makes life so much easier, is that you can actually tell when it needs water. So I do generally, I suppose, go by the little squeeze test with this guy. Whereas these ones, I tend to stick to a bit of a system. I mean, especially with this one, it you, it never gets squishy. It all just, you know, one will just fall off, which is not what you want. So, yeah, I generally kind of keep to a strict routine with all the other Ritzalis. Okay, let it, let's grab this little one and I will meet you 
on the floor and we're going to repot this guy because it has completely outgrown this tiny tiny little vessel look at the oh my god the roots they're just nuts so i actually forgot to mention my oh how do you say this schlumbergerbia um it's the christmas or thanksgiving cactus and i've had this one since christmas it has a really pretty little white flower which has kind of like a pink um Mm, like kind of hangy little bits in the center. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have a photograph that I can put up to show you, but yeah, no, it's been growing very nicely. Um, it's still in its original soil that it came in, which looks like, you know, like a basic houseplant mix. You can see there's perlite and stuff in there, but I would like to change that. I've just been kind of checking out how often I need to water it and that kind of thing. And then I kind of like actually forgot that I had it for a while there. I mean, obviously I am watering it. I'm probably watering this one much the same as the others actually with this because it's in, uh, yeah, like I said, it's in like quite a, I would say quite a, a absorbent soil base. So it absorbs a lot of water. Um, and I do bottom water. When I water this plant, I don't tip the water on top. And yeah, I'm really loving it. It's such a pretty little thing. Um, I mean, it doesn't need to flower for me for me to enjoy it. I really just love how it grows and I'm looking forward to it getting longer. So yeah, back to the whole Thanksgiving or is it Thanksgiving or is it Christmas cactus? The difference between the two is apparently the Christmas one has round... Like when the leaves emerge, they come out round, whereas with the Thanksgiving one, they come out flat. I can't actually remember um, how they come out. All I can remember is that they were really pretty and white, and that's why I bought it. I bought it because it's got that real Christmas vibe with little snowy white flowers on the top. And yeah. That's that dude, absolutely love it. Can't wait to see what it's gonna do next. How long these things will get. Oh, um, I have seen a couple of people online with the variegated version of this now. That looks really super cute. It's like an elbow, so it's white and green. And if I do ever see one of those, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Ooh. Excuse me. Well, um, yeah, I'll cut that sneeze out. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. Um, yeah, if I ever see one around, I most definitely will grab it. If it's of a reasonable price, of course. Okay, let's get into this repot. Here we are. I'm going to show you. This is my Pilocarpa. And the roots are very substantial i mean they're way down Ooh. if you look underneath you can see the roots at the bottom as well so it's definitely time this vessel is tiny and we've been getting a lot of leaf stem droppage so i guess i'm taking that as a sign um i haven't really decided on which part actually let me just go and get some bits and bobs and I'm going to tip the camera down and show you the plant and we'll talk through the vessels as well. Oh, that sun is so good. I'm actually going to put this mat down. I've got a horrible feeling it's dirty there. Is it? Oh, no, it's not. Brilliant. Right, pots. So, recently bought this vessel, found this at Little Dobby's. Yes, another find. Off. yeah so i've got this one which i think i think that's gonna be too big i don't know is it too big though i don't know actually or i was thinking this one but it's this it's kind of just as shallow so that's not really gonna work and then i recently took some plants out of this part 
so it could go in there but I mean that's also quite shallow it's just you know so I am kind of thinking maybe I should use this one oh, it seems a bit nuts hang on a minute let me just have a look and see what size the other plant is in um yeah quick look so i mean this i mean this one's in a smaller vessel so it kind of seems maybe i'm gonna have to put this one in this one does that make sense yeah i think that makes more sense to me doing that because yeah, it's the same size, but deeper. And I mean, this one could definitely cope with being in something deeper. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then this one will go in here. So first things first, let's just get this out of here. Now how easy this is going to be. I'm hoping it will just come out in one kind of chunk. Which I don't think it will. Oh my gosh. I'm going to get my paintbrush and just kind of wiggle it around a little bit yeah so oh yeah I was gonna go through my wish list okay hang on I might need to go and get my phone my other one hang on let me just do that let's do the wish list because this is gonna be long yeah okay <laughs> I think I'll probably do the wish list at the very end because I can't actually remember what all of them look like. There's not loads, but um, they're not all Ripsalas. I think there's only two or maybe one or two Ripsalas on there. And then the rest are like kind of jungle cactus. Okay, let's see if that's... Yay. So, it's kind of all together, which is great. I am going to just quickly chuck in some lacquer at the bottom. fabulous oh I love it when a plan comes together don't you just love that yeah there's actually one of the Ripsalis on my um, wish list I was directed towards by a subscriber and oh my gosh it is absolutely gorgeous it's I mean you know when you see when you see this plant you're just gonna be like oh my god yeah you're going to want it. If you like Rich Silas, if you're watching this video, you probably do. Um, but yeah, you're going to want this plant. Everyone's going to want this plant. And I've looked already. All that, even though I'm on a plant van, <laughs> I have looked for it. And I can't find it anywhere. Not in here in the UK anyway. But I will most definitely be hunting for this one particular plant. Yeah, I just need to... Okay, I think I'm done with this one. I 
don't see any air like gaps or anything like that. We do, of course, have a massive reservoir and I'm just wondering, was that a good move? Was it? Did it really need such a large reservoir? I think I messed it up. Sorry guys, I'm actually changed my mind. I don't want to do that. <laughs> because the reservoir that it has is already quite deep. Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> We're starting again, guys, I'm so sorry. So this is the um, product that I was talking about, Desert Mix. So it doesn't actually tell you what is in there, but I'm gonna pour some out and you can have a look. And I'm gonna kind of guess my way through it. Now, I know that there's sand in there. I know that there's bark I can quite clearly see that there's some bark in there and some I see charcoal lots of like quite coarse large pieces of charcoal pumice um the red um, stuff is lava rock um this is cocoa husk and I'm guessing some sand so that is, yeah, that's what I'm seeing. And I think last time I did mix in a little bit of cocoa core, but I don't feel that that was necessary with my paintbrush. Anyway, so yeah, again, you can see like there's a gap just there. So if you... push the roots towards the back and the soil can go in place. Do we have any others? Any more, any more? I think. Yeah, I think that's everything. I think it's done and I'm quite liking that. I'm gonna pop off and clean this vessel. As you can see, it's full of algae and yucky stuff. And then I'll be right back. I'm back with a nice clean vessel. Oh, right, let's do this. Um, actually, let me just put some liquor in the bottom of this first. Should I put a little bit more? Uh, just a little bit more. Where did I put them? Oh, here we go. That should be fine. That's what we're working with. I'm just putting a bit of, um, what is this actually? Oh, I'm just putting, I'm just putting in a little bit of um, that buzzing sound. Is my fridge very irritating? Yeah, it's just a house plant mix. I mean, it's got some bark in it, pumice. It's just cocoa core, cocoa husk. Nothing exciting, but I'm just going to put a little bit in and just have a look, really. But yeah. Mm, I quite like the look of that. It's really hard to tell like why I like the look of that. But um if it could just, if it could hold on to a little bit more water that would be fair. So I'm gonna try that out and see what happens. Because with this particular plant, I do find out of all of them is the thirstiest. And yeah, I would actually, you know what? Since I have just remembered that. Yeah, it, oh, wrong. Fuck. Yeah, I do find it to be kind of thirsty. Um, 
kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know why, but it's in the same area as all of the others. I guess that's just that plant. So I think adding a little bit of this base mix will work out quite nicely. Fingers crossed. I'll just stir that in. And I will show you what that is looking like. So it's looking a little less dusty, basically, compared to compared to when it doesn't have anything mixed in. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and put a layer of that in the bottom. And I really hope that this is gonna be easy to get out. Now, I haven't watered this in a while, cause yeah, I was just kind of getting ready for this really. Actually, you know what, I need a bit higher it's also got its reservoir okay well fingers crossed the whole thing doesn't just fall apart I really I think I'm just gonna do the paintbrush method again soil looks solid oh my god okay let's see yay oh oh happy okay so i'm gonna take those off there she is she just came out just like that that's just so well behaved i love that yeah and that was bang on point that's perfect And yeah, I think this is a really good move. It's now gonna be less thirsty. And it, yeah, it clearly is screaming out for a new pot. Um, don't have to be an expert really to see that. Yeah, I'm making a mess. Making a mess. looking better already I'm so happy and now it's gonna have more space to grow and hopefully less droppage making me very sad to keep finding bits of stem like this on the floor and um, I actually just found a dried up part of my paradox and minor and just pulled that out so that vessel is clearly too small as well and I, I would love to repot the paradox for today but unfortunately I don't have a vessel for it so but yeah I'm really happy with that she's looking so cute in there she already looks bigger brilliant actually now I can show you how I water my plants right so here they are. Oh, I'm so chuffed with that. She's looking so pretty. Love it. So yeah, watering. Squishy bottle. Um, it still has a little bit of great white in there. So yeah, I pretty much just try and get everywhere. This one's a bit trickier because you have to kind of go in between everything. But yeah, I just kind of go round. Absolutely everywhere. Even in the nooks. So, and generally, 
you'll see about that much water flow through and see how quick it is. It's very quick. Okay, let's put you back. And this one. Um, okay, don't see anything in, oh, but we did use a slightly different substrate in this one. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to give it one more like that and then that's it and she hopefully will still live in here yeah oh she looks adorable oh, she looks so cute and yeah i wanted to show you this very sad dried up yeah, hopefully I can propagate this piece. Because we do have some roots. Sorry, that's really bad camera work. But yeah, that's it really. That's that's the bit that, that fell off. So I'm going to try and propagate this. I'm really pleased I got that job out of the way. One less plant to worry about. Brilliant. So let's move on to the wish list. And I'm going to, as per usual, put the photos on the side. Um, okay, so some are Ripsalis. I think there's actually only one here. Well, there's two that are Ripsalis, but the one isn't there room silence? <laughs> um, okay, let's just start with the one that's... It's a rip silence that I was introduced to by one of you guys. One of my subscribers um, put me onto this rip silence. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, I can see why she kept going on about this plant and I want one too. So I'm not sure if she's got one yet. If you are watching, let me know if you have bought it. It is actually a Herpazia num, numerla folia. Numerla folia. Check this thing out. Oh my God, it's so intricate. The design is like, I remember actually having a piece of jewellery that looked something very similar to this. It was from Indonesia or it was from, no, it was actually from Thailand. Um, I don't have it anymore and I'm gutted that I don't have it. I don't want to actually go, I don't want to tell you how I lost that thing, but oh, this plant is absolutely stunning. I think it is one of those plants that you could just get lost in just looking at all the different linkage and the shininess of the leaf and how it hangs and I mean as you can see there's various kind of like different forms of it where it does I suppose depending on whether it's trying to grow towards the light it will kind of it will throw out a different shape here or there but it's just stunning I really I really hope that I do stumble upon this plant because it, it's oh it's a no-brainer really isn't it okay so definitely wanted to start with that one the next one that i am going to talk about is hang on let me just get back on my list oh no ah uh, here we go yeah so the next one um is actually i would consider it a jungle cactus and it's it was on my 2023 list and has now moved over onto my 2024 list. Um, I know it as the monkey tail cactus. I'll put the correct name up. It's very long. That's its name. So yeah, the monkey tail cactus. Absolutely gorgeous little fluffy thing. Apparently it is really fluffy to the touch, but obviously, um, well not obviously, when you're brushing it downwards you wouldn't want to brush it in the opposite direction the same way you wouldn't want to stroke a cat that way 
it flowers also i think it's the, um, a, the type of cactus that would flower i'm not sure about this but possibly in the winter but i'm not sure about that but it is stunning um the flowers are red um i mean i'm i would definitely not get it for the flower but i mean it looks seriously tropical and i would love to have this hanging in my hallway because i feel that that would just look so stunning um just above the staircase but um i definitely wouldn't buy it for the flower it looks a little freaky to be honest with its flower but oh look how fluffy <laughs> It's just adorable. Now I did see these last year in a plant shop and I did a video and I was talking about it and it I was going to go back and buy it. It was kind of like the beginning of the month or something or the middle of the month where funds were low, you know. And I swore that I was going to go back and get it, but I did not and they sold them. I think they had about two and both of them were gone. In fact, I know that one of you guys one of, my, one of my subscribers um, said that they actually went to the shop and bought one. So I was really chuffed that at least one of you guys got it. Someone that I know or, you know, someone that can inform me how they're getting on. Let me know if you are watching. How is that monkey tail cactus? Um, I do plan on getting one this year. I have seen them at uh, Conservatory Archives. If you're here in the UK, that's a great place to go and get one. They have them in like either just like one in like a very small pot and I think it's about eight pound or you can get one with multiple hanging towels um I think for about 30 but yeah check out their website um the next plant that I want to talk about is or that's on my wish list is Herenia Sabrina now it's 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 a cactus but check it out. Check out the flower on this creature. I mean, it's unworldly. It's it's from another world. It's, oh my gosh, I want it. I want it. Look at it in its part hanging in the pot. I mean, oh. It's just bizarre. It is... I mean, the flower itself reminds me of those kind of buttons you would see on an outfit from the 70s or something, or the 60s or something. It's just so trippy and just like it's from a different world. Oh, I mean, can you imagine having this plant and it actually flowering? Like you actually get it to flower. <sighs> that would feel like quite the accomplishment. Can you see why? I mean, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Let's stop looking at that one. Let's move on to the next. The next one is Epiphyllum guttamalens monstros. I don't know if I pronounced that very well. It's very curly. It's very curly, Shirley, and I quite like it. I like how it looks like it's dancing with the way it's just, yeah, it really is quite interesting. And I mean, it might look a little cabbagey to some people, but I think if you put it in the right pot, like where it is in this terracotta pot, for instance, that's really pretty, just like that. And yeah, let's see. So we've got pink flowers and we've got a white flower as well. The white flower. Oh, the white flower looks a lot like, um, what's that orchid? Um, there's an orchid that has really long strappy leaves and that is on my, my list. Actually, I should mention it on this list because where else to put it? Um, I think it's called Lady of the Night or something like that i'll try and put that up as well actually because she's a beauty 
um the only the only thing with this orchid is that it does only bloom once a year which opens up at night let me see if i can find it well i think i found it did i find it um oh here it is here it is Ooh. oh it's so pretty i'll put the correct name up as well it's so so gorgeous and but the leaves i mean even if you were to buy it just for the leaves absolutely gorgeous moving right along so the next plant on my list, I think this is the last one, guys. Which ones have I done? I'm not sure which ones I've done now. Okay, I did that, I did that. Yeah, this is the last one. It's Ripsalis monocantha. And I'm all for it. When you can see, I mean, I don't know what it's going to be like as, as a juvenile stage. It's probably going to stand out a bit. It's again a really strappy, strappy leaf. Another plant that I would love to put in my hallway in the staircase. Um, that is where my Epiphyllum angulara is currently. And yeah, I want lots of plants hanging down that staircase. And this plant looks like a winner it has an orange flower which is really pretty orange is my favorite color i really love it i don't know why it just it just looks really gorgeous i just love those straps i mean obviously it's going to take quite a while before you get to that stage but yeah i'm all for it i'm all for that orange orange flower very very pretty so that is my Ripsala Stroke Jungle Cactus wish list. Let me know if you have been persuaded into buying any of those plants or if you own any of them. Oh my gosh, let me know if you own any of these plants. Please do, because I want to know where you got it, how you take care of it. I want to know all the things. I'm completely obsessed with Ripsalis at the moment. It's definitely a species that I get on well with. They seem to like me. They seem to like this environment. And um, I definitely want more of them. I just find them so easy going and so chill. And although they probably don't look like they do a hell of a lot, like you're not gonna suddenly get like a big heart shaped leaf or anything. But it just it just creeps up on you and you just suddenly you just have like a long strappy leaf that's hitting the floor and it just seems to come out of nowhere but yeah none of my um ripsalis have actually flowered yet um but again i'm not mad about the whole flower thing although i did almost buy an orchid last week um yeah and this month actually is the store that I work at. Um, it is Orchid of the Month. So I might find myself coming home with an orchid. I'm still on a plant van, but I wouldn't mind trying an orchid. So yeah, you might find me here next with an orchid in my hand, who knows? <laughs> anyway i'm gonna let you guys go thank you so much for hanging out give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it um definitely leave a comment down below um let me know if you have any of the plants that are on my wish list or if there's any plant that has slipped past me any ripsalis that has slipped past me that you think i might like do leave that in the comments down below because that's definitely how I found one of them. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I really hope that you are watching and that you have found your plant. Um, let me know how you're getting on if you are watching. Anyway, I'm going to say goodbye. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Have a fabulous week and I will see you here again very, very soon. Until then.
いっぱい。